Hey guys, and welcome back to Eden. So, let's just jump right back in. Maya looked astounded and shrugged her shoulders. Even Sion's eyes looked mystified, and she stared up at him. I'm betting it's because the two of you concealed your whereabouts flawlessly. In other words, the military ultimately lost us after all. According to 2nd Lieutenant Lavier, requests for reinforcements were delayed due to all systems, communications included, going down at the research facility. I heard the system being taken down was your doing as well. It was a different person who wore the base or who wrote the base program. All I did was run what was prepared for me. Scion sent a pleading glance my way. Yes, the program that rendered the facility security inoperable and single-handedly gave Scion freedom was something my sister had prepared. My sister protected me, protected us. Haruna, what's wrong? No, it's nothing. In any event, the military gave up awfully easily. Well, that stuck me as a bit odd as well, but it's understandable. Because there's no time left. I see. I looked up at the sky. Oh, it's so pretty! Though it was daytime, the star above us was shining a sinister red. The fate of the world had... The fate of the world became clear when that red star appeared. This will soon end. They have to, they have to expedite the final phase of the evacuation. There were scarcely any units remaining on the ground, so they couldn't spare any personnel to search for Scion, huh? That and one more thing. I think the government, servicemen, and the members of the evacuation project finally realized. Faint breeze blew against all the greenery around us. Scion basked in the wind as she smiled happily. The evacuation project could finish safely without me around. I had become expendable. There's no way you're expendable! Mankind was saved because you were there. Everyone knows that! My role ended ages ago. I just withdrew to the outskirts of the stage and waited for the curtain to drop. No, the curtain's already been lowered. That's just... Maya looked downward and shook her head repeatedly. Since she came here to collect the information on Scion, I was sure she had vested interest in her and respect her, or respected her, but... Scion? Maya suddenly lifted her head and approached Scion. They were, at the, or they were the same eyes she had when she uh, shed me sharply at the lake. Or chided me, sorry, I don't know. I came to make the cur- er, I came to make a curtain call. Collecting information, was it? What did you want to ask? About you! I want to know as much about you as possible! Why? Probably because I admire you. How interesting. For some reason, Scion's gaze was filled with anticipation. Could it be that she had been seeking someone's approval? Wanting to interview- uh, wanting to interview her because she liked her was something I both or I both could and couldn't really understand. That's why I want you to let me interview you. I want you to tell me about yourself. In that case, you should stay here for a while. Huh? You might just figure something out if you watch me living my life here. I won't be held responsible if you don't, though. That's okay. Sinking my teeth in good and deep is part of my job. Is that okay? This time it was Maya's voice that was filled with anticipation. Do as you wish. It's not like I could gather intel that or yeah, it's not like I could gather intel that would collaborate with her testimony, and leaving to confirm any of it would be difficult. It would be essential for me to be on a heightened alert. But I couldn't complain any further if Scion had accepted her. I wanted Scion to be able to do as she pleased. Just as she had wished for me. I said to a certain someone who resided deep within my heart, 
this is for the best. Oh my god, it's so cute. Oh. Oh my. <laughs> the next morning, when I entered the washroom, it was already occupied. Whoa! What are you acting so surprised for? Well, I didn't hear any footsteps at all. Maya was blushing, slightly embarrassed by how surprised she had gotten. At least knock! What would you do if I had just gotten out of the bath? She said hastily as she blushed even deeper, or an even deeper red, looking like she'd remembered something. Sion and I aren't in the habit of taking baths first thing in the morning. Huh? It kind of feels like I've been surprised by everything since the second I got here. At least it's not boring, right? Could I use that? I asked, pointing a finger at the wash basin. Oh, I'm um, sure, go ahead! Maya quickly moved aside and I turned on the faucet over the wash basin. I washed my face with water so cold it could crack the skin on your hands. The last of my mild drowsiness was fading away. Ooh. Here! I took the towel Maya held out for me and wiped down my face. You're an earlier riser than I'd have guessed. What's that supposed to mean? How rude! She puffed out her cheeks like a little child. You look awfully undisciplined at a glance. Actually, I was too excited to sleep very well. The bed kept me up till morning, so I got up. You were talking to Sion until pretty late, trying not to push her too much. I finally got an exclusive interview with Sion. It's a dream come true, so I wound up losing track of time. I'm so sorry. Although she seemed apologetic, tinges of excitement were interweaved in her reply. Don't have to apologize to me. Maya had taken my place and listened to the continuation of... Uh, er... Yeah, Maya had taken my place, sorry, and listened to the continuation of her... Uh... Whatever that is, bedtime story. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know German. <laughs> I'm guessing that was a German word. I was sitting in, of course. But since the majority had to do with Scion's work, it went in one ear and out the other. By the way, how long will you be here? I really wish I could stay forever. Maya looked uncomfortable and cast her eyes away from me. I'm going to board the final ship. Since I'm going to be covering the final ship's departure... You'll be covering the day mankind leaves this planet, huh? Sounds like a nice assignment. The long-running Earth evacuation project was finally coming to a finale. Covering the final ship would surely garnish a much greater degree of attention for her from the world at large. It was super rough competing to be the reporter on the last flight, though. Maya shrugged slightly. But, you know, there's very little time until the final ship's departure. The port is a long ways off from here, so I'll have to set out well ahead of time. I see. Hey, Haruna. What is it? Maya took a step towards me without warning and leaned in close. A sweet aroma hung lightly in the air. Likely the scent of her shampoo or something similar. You know, I'm going to board the final ship. I got the message. No need to repeat yourself. But you and Sion will... Don't say it. I lightly grabbed Maya by the shoulders and edged her away. She had no intention of leaving my side. But... But... You came into this knowing fully well about our livelihood here. Are you alright with that? I don't know about Sion, but... At long last, I have a path in my life that doesn't involve stealing the lives of others. Pers er, pursuing that path is the only thing I could think of now. I couldn't really say I had found where I truly belonged. My sister, Alicia, Sion. I didn't want to lose the place I'd finally reached thanks to those girls being there for me and leading the way. Maya pointed an accusatory or gaze at me. She'd be better off ignoring me and just worrying about Sion. I realized something just now. Yes? 
Your face is kind of large, isn't it? What, 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 what was that? Maya's eyes went wide as she turned to, uh, to the bathroom mirror. M my face? You've got to be kidding me! She patted her own cheeks and grumbled under her breath in an unsettled tone. That's ridiculous! Hey, that's right! Maya glared at me with a glint in her eyes. You've made a fundamental mistake! It only seems large to you because you've grown used to looking at Sayat's tiny face this whole time, Ramuna! Our bodies have different dimensions, so obviously my face is going to look bigger if you compare it side by side. But you know what? Let me say this loud and clear. Is this really something worth getting so frantic about? Upon closer inspection, or inspection, tears were brimming in Maya's eyes. I'm quite the beauty with an adorable tiny face myself. Don't underestimate me! Maya, <laughs> Maya declared passionately and went flying from the washroom. What a rambunctious woman, first thing in the morning, too. Oh well, she wouldn't be here forever. Some hustle and bustle might be nice on occasion. Mm. Although it has just sort of happened on its own, I realized that I was treating Maya like a normal person. This came as a bit of a shock, and also, I found myself believing it wasn't so bad this way. Oh, eyes. He's warming up to Maya. The lake shone with the dazzling brilliance as the gentle sunlight shined down upon it. Around noon, I was sitting along the shore leisurely dangling out a fishing line. You haven't caught anything yet? Fishing isn't something you can rush. I see. Sion sat beside me, gazing idly out at the lake. She looked a bit sleepy. I assumed it was due to her keeping Maya company late into the night. If you're bored, why don't you head back to the house? That would be a pain. I guess you'll just have to stay put then. Will Maya be alright on her own? A question out of the left field suddenly flew at me. I'm sure she'll be fine. She's just tilling the fields and scattering compost and lime. She should be covered in dirt by now, and likely having a frantic scuffle with soil. That's some really heavy labor. Going for physical torture this time? I'm not so charitable as to let an uninvited guest eat for free. Besides, she ate tomatoes from our field without permission. That hard labor is part of her punishment. You have a warm sense of love. It wasn't out of love in the first place. I could faintly hear the sound of water. I quickly looked at the lake, but there wasn't anything particular... Er, there wasn't any particular change in the float. I can't catch anything after all. Our meals are all vegetables. We're not getting enough protein. Maybe I could catch a rabbit or slaughter another chicken. Maya's got guts. Huh? She traversed a nearly unpopulated world all alone, and made it all the way here. Yet, she shows no sign of fatigue, and is tilling the fields even more. Yes, undeniable she's brimming with energy. I answered as I pulled lightly on the fishing pole. Beyond my capabilities, I would have likely died during our journey from the research facility if you hadn't been pulling me by the hand. Maya may have physical stamina, but you have mental prowess. That's not it. It's something more fundamental. It's a matter of vitality. I think the last time I was brimming with vitality like Maya must have been decades ago. Sion. I could see the grief in her eyes. Her pure, untanned skin was paler than usual. Is this emotion what you call envy? Yes, I think so. I've never known this feeling until now. It's better to know and be disappointed than not know and always wonder. Have you ever been envious of anyone before? I'm not sure. I looked at the float, responseless as ever. I guess it must be time to call it quits. There have been times where I see people smiling and feel a twinge of pain in my chest. I wonder my, to myself, how can they smile so happily? Like your sister or Alicia smiles? I nodded. Also, your smile. Huh? Mine? Sion opened her eyes wide. You've smiled very happily at times ever since we got here. I doubt I can smile like you do. You're... 
probably too tough. That's why you... Oh. Wait, oh. Huh? You have a bite. The float was bobbing up and down where she pointed. Whoa! Reels weren't barely, or very complex devices. A combination of good timing and precise tugs on the rod end. Oh, there it is! I can see the fish! All right! I pulled back on the pole the second I could see the fish on the water surface. The moment it... Yeah. The moment I felt it pull against me was or with considerable force, I tightened my grip and pulled yet again. It's so big! Wow! Sion gave me a round of applause and or then held out a nearby pail for me. I quickly took the fish off the line and tossed it in. Just as Sion had said, it was quite the catch. Incredible, bro. I know it's pure chance you hooked a big one, but it's still amazing. More or less. It sounded like she was trying to give me a compliment. It looks delicious. I'm not sure about that. I'm up next, let me try. Sure, let me rebait the line. Yeah. I quickly put bait on the hook and handed Sai on the pole. Do it just like I taught you. Don't be hasty. Once I taught something, I never forget. Zion said without a lick of cuteness and took a step forward or towards the lake. When suddenly... Oh no. Her body quivered tremendously, as though she had been hit by lightning. Zion! Her delicate body bent backwards like a bow, and the pole fell from her outstretched hand. I rushed to catch her and looked down at her face. Sion was gazing off the other way with a dazed expression. Sion, you're... Ah, uh, yeah. It's nothing. She fixed her posture and lightly pushed against my shoulder. She probably wanted to say she could stand by herself, but... Are you really okay? Yeah, I just got a bit dizzy. Maybe we should call it a day. But we only caught one fish. It's big enough that it should be plenty for two. Which two will split it? The freeloader will remain a, will refrain of her own accord. You are mean to her. A small smile appeared on Sion's face. It was a gentle smile that for some reason made me think of that maid. Her smile shot through my chest as if needles had pierced my heart. And yet, I wanted her to smile even more. I may not be able to smile, but I believed it would be enough if Sion could. Oh man. Day turned to t or day turned to night, and Sion got in bed while it was still early. Keeping her bout of dizziness in mind, I suggested she get right to sleep. After I made sure Sion was asleep, I did a quick check around the perimeter, then retired to my room. The period between now and when I slept made up what little free time I had in the day. With that being said, there wasn't much left that I wanted to do. I realize now, a bit late in the game, that all I'd done these past several years was go to war. I'm a bland person. The very instant I whispered that, I reached for the handgun I had thrown onto the bed. Gripping the pistol firmly in my hand, I concealed my footsteps and clung to the door. <gasps> oh no, on the count of three. One, two, three! I swung open the door and pointed my gun at the person who appeared on the other side. <sighs> I covered her screaming mouth and pressed her against the wall. What are you doing? Oh! I'll let you go, but don't make a peep, got it? Maya nodded quickly. <sighs> Maya took a deep breath once she was released. What are you doing all of a sudden? That's what I should be saying. Don't conceal your footsteps and prowl around someone else's room. But for the record, I wasn't trying to sneak into your bed or anything. Her cheeks died red as she blurted out that outrageous comment. Not that I had misinterpreted it in any way. Sneaking into my bed would have or would have been an improvement at this point. What were you up to? You're the one who said to be quiet while Sion is sleeping. I was just being considerate. That's misleading. What should I have done then? Act normal. I holstered my gun and took a step away from Maya, 
But this is all the time that I have for this episode, guys. So if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!